think that maybe, just maybe, we might be precipitating some type of, 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 of battle by constantly reminding folks we're right here? We have our guest, Lionel. We're going to cover a huge gamut of issues over the next 50 minutes or so. He is a commentator and radio host. The website is lionelmedia.com. You can find him on Twitter at Lionel Media. Lionel, it's been a while. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me just also add, because I'm following in your footsteps, my YouTube channel at Lionel Nation. Lionel Nation on YouTube. Go and check that out. Building his YouTube channel there. Again, vital to have that reach across all these different platforms. Lionel, I want to start with North Korea because we just uh, we, we were covering the fact that Basically, Trump has said he won't talk to Japan and South Korea if there is a military attack on North Korea. They have said all along, before anything happens, you need to talk to us first. That looks like it's not going to happen. We have it tied in with the Syrian narrative, you know, that Trump was right to bomb Assad in Syria, that that sent a strong message to North Korea. It seems to have worked, at least domestically. His poll number is back up to 50%. Do you think the uh, the two issues of North Korea and Syria can be separated or should they be treated as one grand narrative? Well, f first and foremost, I don't believe anything I read in the newspaper or newspapers or media. Listen to me, newspapers, I'm, I'm being rather anachronistic here. I don't believe anything that I hear. I think that, very frankly, uh, President Trump and uh, T-Rex Tillerson and others are getting a little bit, uh, feeling pretty good, getting those numbers bumped. Let's face it, they've been catching grief left and right. And all of a sudden, when you start rattling those sabers and talking about fighting back and dropping Moabs, and by the way, this is the mother of all broadcasting right now, but when you talk about that and you talk about death and destruction in the usual, dare I say this, this phallic referencing, you know, is, uh, it, it, it has tremendous uh, benefits for poll numbers and the like. And I think, very frankly, the president's human and just, Political folks are human, so they're going to ratchet up this kind of speech. Unfortunately, as I said, I don't believe anything. And what I don't also believe is that this country has never understood, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but nobody ever wants to think about North Korea's perspective. You know, there's a, 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 um, a wonderful scholastic and academic by the name of, name of Bruce Cummings from the University of Chicago to explain this CUM, 1M, Cummings to explain the history and the background of North Korea. And I would venture to say, Paul, that most Americans have no idea. They're told that Kim Jong-un is an idiot. He's insane. He's uh, syphilitic or crazy or whatever he's doing. He's a man child. He's a lunatic. Uh, there's starvation. And they will believe this. So what I do hope, and I would be less than honest if I didn't say there isn't a part of me that says, you know, if we could somehow perhaps by virtue of some kind of cyber shenanigans, disengage or denude someone, disengorge some of them of their ability to detonate a nuclear uh, bomb, uh, potentially, I, I'd be less than candid. I didn't say there's a part of that thought that was a good idea. However, we're now doing cyber attacks. So how are we going to be talking to somebody else who dares to implement the same against us? Dare I say, dread Russia. Or whatever. So it's very, very complicated. I'm, 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 I'm sure that we will work through this. But Paul, I don't believe anything I hear or read. No, it's, it's also, you know, something that I've thought about many times is North Koreans, the people themselves are kind of dehumanized. People don't realize that, you know, you're not just wiping out a horrible regime, which it is. You're wiping out millions of people who are brainwashed victims. In their heart of hearts, we know they don't support dear leader. We know that they're forced to do so. You have a network in North Korea of 200,000 people in concentration camps, basically thought criminals. These people have criticized the government or somebody's reported them for not showing enough worship for dear leader. You know, you have horrible atrocities being committed in these camps. You know, these people are victims too. It's not, it's not as if they're right behind dear leader and that they're full in. They only support him outwardly because if they didn't, Right. They'd be thrown in a camp with all their entire family. So when people talk about bombing North Korea, it's very, you know, it's very flagrant, and it it doesn't account for the fact that these are these are victims themselves, right? 
But also, yes, well, I, again, and I don't want to keep saying this, I believe this to be true. I mean, I have been so bamboozled. I have been so lied to. Weapons of mass destruction, you, you name it. So, okay, I'll give you that one. Let's look a little bit more. This is a, as others have said, North, North Korea is a garrisoned country. This is this is a country where virt virtually everybody is or has been in the military. With an average of 10 years of experience, there is underground, since 1945, they have been building and preparing. They have they have been at war or the, 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 the threat of war almost their entire existence. So we're talking caves. We're, we're talking an ability to fight the likes of which we have not seen before. Understand who this army is. There's also this idea that South Korea is Nirvana, you know, Shangri-La. Not necessarily so. So what what my my concern is is that when you have Paul, nothing but uh, exercises and war games and saber rattling in South Korea all the time. Let me ask you something because you're a bright man, despite your jet lag. And the fact that you haven't slept in 14 days, <laughs> do you think that maybe, just maybe, we might be precipitating some type of, 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 of battle by constantly reminding folks we're right here? And in this era of nuclear bombs, do people think, like in the era of when you could smoke on an airplane, where people thought that the smoke would go up to aisle 16 or C and then stop, nuclear fallout, do, do we have, have we lost sight of what we're talking about here. So, so, so while this is terrific and while everybody universally loathes, hates, derides, abhors this, this, this crazed, despotic ruler, the more everybody speaks in unison, I'm sorry if I didn't say this, the more suspect I am of the truth. Because you understand something, because John Pilders did never believe anything unless it's officially denied, and I don't believe anything. I don't believe, and there's no pro-North Korea contingent, but I don't believe this. It's as though you want me to believe this. You want me to sign on to war with North Korea? And how exactly is that to take place? Is it limited? Have we thought about this? And Paul, when you have somebody by the, by the name of Mad Dog Mattis as the architect of your defense policy, is there not a part of you that's just a tad bit um, concerned? I mean... You know. I mean, it's incredible how lightly it's treated. Oh, it's just a nuclear war. It's just a regional nuclear war. You know, how are people going to deal with that? You've got millennials on Twitter who have mental breakdowns oh. if you tag them in a tweet. <laughs> how are they going to deal with an actual nuclear war? Now, of course, it you know it might not conflate with the US. They might not be uh, under direct assault, under direct threat. But again, how are people actually going to cope with that given they, they can't cope? with mean tweets. May I say something for a minute? And I know this sounds very gratuitous, but being gratuitous doesn't mean it's not true. You have been dangerously, diabolically, evilly, if there is a brilliant in your YouTube uh, disquisitions on snowflakes, SJWs, this, spineless group of invertebrates, these little powder puffs who who show, you know, Paul, in my generation, when I was a kid, I remember kind of like the end of, I mean, I missed the Vietnam War by this much. The left was anti-war, tough. The left was dirty jokes, provocative stuff, underground, uh, porn, I mean, blue movie, listen to me. It was cutting edge, it was the right, it was the adults who said, stop saying that, ooh, you're dirty, ooh, you're hateful, stop. The left was cutting edge, and it was music that talked about war, and we voted. And when we, or they, protested, you didn't scratch your head and said, this man, this woman is walking around with foam rubber, engorged genitalia, and pudenda. This woman's wearing a knit cap that apparently is some for... I, we were we, we asking, what the hell are these people even, what are they marching for? And you have so perfectly targeted these, these imbecilic cretins, these Boeotians, who, 
Do they know anything? This weekend in New York, they were protesting not false flag attacks in, the, in Syria, not more war, not Trump going back on his word, as he said, not the MAGA make America great. Oh, no, no, no. They weren't talking about that. No, no, they were protesting Trump's tax returns. What the hell are they talking about? Their tax returns? What, what do they, has anybody, do they read anything? Is this, did they make, did, did, they, did they sign up for this, like when you rent a hall for a wedding? I got the deposit down, might as well have the wedding. Did they arrange that day for protests and they can't go back on their word? I mean, where, wh who are these people? Do they know what's going on? And by the way, the staunch, if you want to call it the right, the mindless Trump acolyte, and there are some of those, have forgotten why they voted for him. So my dear friend Paul, I think we are in the middle of what appears to be an insane asylum from Ed clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here we are stuck in the middle with you, to quote the great Jerry Rafferty. It's insane. <laughs>